Hey there and welcome to Plants vs Germans. Today I'll show you around our gardens and see how well the plants are doing during the month July. Let's start here in the farmer's garden and especially with the raised beds with all the eggplants inside. So we have two kinds here, two varieties. The early long purple three here and the black beauty here. As you can see they're producing quite nicely. We already have some eggplants on the plants here but they're still quite small and still need time to develop. But the early purple or early long purple three are a bit or produce way more right now. They're a bit further than the black beauty but even the black beauty, oh it's a bit rough to touch since the spikes actually hurt quite a bit. Here you can see that even the black beauties are starting to produce fruit. And they have quite a lot of flowers. Unfortunately the black beauty don't have as many as the early long purple three. But that's hard to top since they have like at least five, six, seven, eight flowers on one stem here and have at least like three or four of them. But it's going to be interesting to see how many fruit they're going to produce and if the early long purple three actually tastes better than the black beauty. So right next to the eggplants we have one of the two potato beds and they are already flowered as you can see here and um, even the cilantro has flowered and has a few fruit on here, a few seeds. We're probably going to harvest them and maybe use them, grind them up or just use them for next year to plant some more cilantro. Although we probably have around half a kilo of cilantro seeds left from last year. Since we did the same thing that we did this year and we used the cilantro as a cover crop in one of the raised beds here and it actually sowed itself out again so we had a lot of cilantro last year and harvested the seeds but the potatoes still need a bit this is the purple variety and I think it's not going to take too long until we're able to harvest them right next to it we have the second potato raised bed with the normal looking kinds I've Unfortunately, I forgot which variety they are. Some of them are still flowering. And right here we have this huge pumpkin with one dead leaf here. Um, it looks like it needs water, but I'm not going to water it. It should figure it out itself. It should survive by, its own, by itself here. And it actually branched all the way here and all the way in the back here. I think we even have our first pumpkin on there. See if we can find it. Oh, right there. It should be a Hokkaido, but I'm not 100% sure. Right in the middle of the raised bed here with all the regular potatoes, we have the sweet potatoes. The plant is finally starting to grow. It's finally getting some light and actually has some big leaves now. They'll take a bit longer than the regular tomatoes since we also planted them in a bit later. So this bed I haven't showed you yet. It's our mixed raised bed. We have basically everything in there that we didn't have any spot or any place to put it. This is the corn that was left that we couldn't fit into the other garden. Actually I think four or five of them. Yeah, five of them survived. Oh, even a sixth small one here. And it's growing nicely, but unfortunately the field down there here has corn too, um, which isn't sweet corn, so hopefully this will flower earlier than the other one up there. It's going to be rough. The corn we have down there, I'll show you later, actually is a bit further than the corn for the animals up there. So we should get lucky this year. And next to it, it was some arugula, some wild arugula, and some Asia salads that are already that are already bloomed. So gotta get them out soon. I don't want to let them stay in here because they just attract all the slugs. And we have one row of salad here. 
we have, I think, three uh, Lolo Rossos left, but they also are fairly big already, so they want to flower soon too. So right here we have some brassica, but unfortunately those are the only ones that we have here um, of this variety. I'll sow some new ones soon because we eat them quite often and they need to get a bit bigger still. They're not quite there yet as you can see and unfortunately some of them have started to being eaten or to get eaten. I'll have to walk around and get rid of the slugs again this evening. And this spot right here we use for radishes. It has been a bit dry so I didn't water in here. They might just not make it. Let's see. And in the corner right here we have some Vietnamese um, cilantro. It has those big leaves but it's a bit dry unfortunately. Hopefully it will still make it but I'm not 100% sure. So in between all the leftovers we actually put two leftover tomatoes in here. We have a couple more but we have one here that's been growing nicely. It already flowered and back here too and you can see I think it also has a tomato on it. Take a look over there. Yeah, right here. But this tomatoes or those two, um, we didn't really check which variety it is. My brother just planted them in here. So I'll have to wait until the fruit actually ripens to at least make a guess. So right here in the small raised bed here, you can hardly see it. Uh, because we have the flowering plants here for the pollinators, but in here we have some tomatillo Which is also flowering and growing nicely and Starting to produce some fruit especially in the ones over here we have some nice fruit here and Back here too. We have four plants in here But they all kind of tossed over there except for this one and it's branching out quite a lot. This part of the farmer's garden I haven't showed you yet but here we have the lychee tomato. It's like a primal form of the tomato and we mainly want to grow it to get some seeds out of it to use it as a as the main body for tomato plants um, later on because they are a bit more pest resistant basically and grow quite big and quite nicely. And next to it, we originally wanted to put in more of the physalis here. We have one here and the other one back there, which is a bit taller already, but hasn't produced any fruit yet, but it's starting soon. As you can see, we have the first flowers here, but it's probably still gonna take some time and right next to it we have some artichokes, but only one this year. We had another one back there somewhere, but it just didn't make it. And we were a bit late this year, so um, even last year we actually couldn't harvest one and it didn't survive the winter, so it's just to try it out again. And right next to it we have some asparagus, um, which is already, or also starting to flower. It's hard to see since the flowers are so small right there and right there and starting to branch out here too it's not that thick yet that's why we didn't harvest it yet but I think next year might be the first time we can actually harvest some asparagus around the fence here we have some blueberries they don't look too healthy this year we don't really know what happened they probably needed to have more acidity in the soil but this plant here actually produces nicely this year. We have a couple of flowers here um, and blueberries especially and this one too but as we go further here this plant barely has any fruit in comparison to the other ones but I think next year they'll start picking it up again. 
and right next to the blueberries we have our kiwi it probably has a bit of problem with the yeah super dry weather uh, you can see the leaves hanging around here it didn't get enough water and I watered it a couple times and then the rain did the rest but I haven't been home for a couple of days and it didn't quite like that but I think it should at least survive and next to it we have our melons our French Charente melons this plant is almost done it has been eaten by all the slugs that just hide in here but here we have another plant and they're the same age but this one hasn't been eaten or hasn't gotten eaten yet and we wanted to use the fence here as a natural trellis or natural and um, we started to put the plant up here since it's big enough now hopefully it will start growing up here and it's just going to support the plant when the first fruits start we had i think around eight melons last year that we were able to harvest out of i guess three or four plants and they tasted really good so we definitely wanted to plant some again and i think we grew them from the seeds that we harvested from last year's melons and it's going to be interesting to see if they bear any fruit in here if the slugs are um, a bit too too dominant or if they actually make it up to the fence and the fence helps supporting the plant bearing the fruit but last year we had our pumpkins around here and uh, they barely produced any fruit we hardly got any pumpkins to harvest from here so it's going to be interesting if it was the soil that was just a bit yeah too too bad or if it was that the plants were just climbing up here on a trellis let's see but right now we have four plants that are or that are surviving let's put it this way there's another one the main stem here has been eaten so it starts branching out there which is fine the other one is down here a bit hard to see it's branching out again too it has nice big green leaves and I think one of them has a flower here uh, and it's hard to see with the leaf here I don't want to plug it off that also has uh, already has a melon on here let's see if it keeps it or just if it falls off so the main part in the farmers garden are the tomatoes obviously you can already see some down there and I'll just show you around um, so you can get a feel of how good they've grown um, since the last time I already brought out a um, video about some of the tomatoes I think two weeks ago but they started or continue to grow really nicely um, I might put the description or the variety in the in the video since it's hard for me to tell with all of them right here but um, some of them are just going bonkers here with all the new flowers and a lot of tomatoes on here especially down here that's a Johannes tomate with like hundreds of tomatoes on one small branch here and even more and more flowers coming out and it's branching all over here on we said we we're just gonna let it branch I'm cutting off as you can see here cut off some branches because I don't want it to spread to the other side here and it only has this metal post basically to support it so we've got to keep it a bit more compact and right here is the Reise Tomate and it's still not getting any color it has some wounds here that started to heal and it's getting bigger and bigger so hopefully it'll start um, ripen soon and I have the one branch coming out here it's been growing good and hopefully oh here you can see some new flowers are coming out which is nice to see and 
Here we have some more tomatoes. Most of them are still green um, and haven't started to to uh, ripen yet. Only some of them, especially the purple varieties, have started right here. That's um, one of the pear, one of the pear uh, varieties that we have. Nice purple one. It has some fruit. It's going to produce more and hopefully a bit more but it looks like I might have cut off the stem on top ah, it'll grow here another big one oh, looking good but still no color on it the one that won't change the color is here the green zebra but it's still super firm now oh, it's starting to soften a bit. So on this side we have a few more tomatoes right here. It's like an egg-shaped one and this one is fairly interesting too. I think I didn't check up on the variety last time. It has a few stripes. It's mainly like light green and dark green. And a really interesting format but that might be a ox heart. I'm not a 100% sure but it looks like one and we have a similar looking one here but that's definitely going to turn purple or is turning purple right now. This tomato has really nice color too. It has like a different shade of green compared to the other ones like a yellow and green and it's going to be interesting to see which color it will turn, but I guess it's going to be a red one. The ones in the back don't get as much light as the other ones, but they have started to grow really well. They're up high already, almost like one and a half meters now, and hopefully they'll grow even more. Right here we have another kind looks like an ox heart too interesting but the other ones look a bit differently that's the same plant they grew more round and this one looks a bit deformed but the other one here too huh, quite interesting and this might be one of the biggest tomatoes we have right now it grew almost twice its size from the last time I took a look at it. Really nice. So that's it from the farmer's garden here. And we'll take a quick look at the cucumbers and then we'll head over to the front garden. Right here I'm in front of the cucumber house. We haven't really fixed it but finally the cucumber starting or starting to grow really really nice. This variety is the F1 hybrid. The Euphibia, I think it was, and it started to pick up really nicely. Has a lot of female flowers on here that are going to turn into cucumbers. And I actually have all right, this one has a bit, bit of two bigger ones right here and here, and the last one has the first cucumber of the season. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting there, as you can see. It is super long, but it's not that thick yet. But I think in a couple of days, it should be ready. And they're climbing nicely. I think I actually twirled them in here today in the morning, since there was a bit of work left for me after I left for four days. So this variety is the Tanya, and it's starting. Like some of them have the first cucumbers on here and back here I think but it does they don't look as um, green as the other ones as you can see even the foliage we have really big leaves and a lot of them compared to this they don't really spread out they don't get as big and at least the plants are growing so I am not really complaining here and I basically fertilize still once a week this one has a side branch here that I left on there hopefully it will produce some fruit but as you can see the 
cucumbers here just get yeah rejected don't get really gotten pollinated haven't gotten pollinated but this one did so well, maybe you'll pick up now so this is probably the raised bed that has been going crazy the most um, this is our mixed herb raised bed and I tried to harvest the herbs in here as you can see here but uh, it's just I can't harvest enough for them to be contained and that's the stevia here um, as you can see we really have to cut off more but I'm not sure what to use it in right now and the same with the estragon and the that's a honey melon sage and a pineapple sage here and to actually I harvested some pineapple sage here because it was branching right here next to the stevia what I'm trying out right now is with all the herbs that you use for some drinks is that I'll just pluck off some stems here cut some off since it starts to grow really nicely afterwards and just soak them in water put them in water and see what the water tastes like after a while um, I did that with the here with the in German it's called Cola Strauch um, and the water actually tastes quite nicely it's basically like a, lem a lemonade light without any sugar in it and you can add some sugar oh it actually smells really really good just like coke and this one smells like lemon like way better than any herb I've ever really smelled or tasted and I want to make some tea out of this one this is for sea show it's for Asian cuisine and right now I'm just cutting off some stems here and some parts to propagate them and have a bit more of them because not of all of them are really tolerant to um, the cold weather here during winter so they probably die off we have another one right here and this one is supposed to smell and taste like uh, shellfish so that's going to be interesting too it's flowering right now which is nice because I want to uh, harvest the seeds but I think this one is tolerant to the winter or hardy but um, propagating all of them right now just to have some small plants that I can bring in during winter because I planted them all in here and which actually tastes really nice too is the orange mint here I only tried it with water but um, I'm pretty sure it's has a nice taste to it when you mix it with something like chicken so if we go past our farmers garden here we have a small area where we just can hang out. Oh, actually one of my cats is here. Sugar. Dozing off. It's a bit hot. Oh yeah, sugar. She likes to cuddle, but she also likes to scratch the hell out of you. So especially right now. <laughs> so I'm a bit anxious. But oh, right now she's just laying around, chilling a bit, which is understandable. So, and we have our ducks here. Originally we got them to battle all the slugs and they don't really like us coming next to, to them and they're only in the cage right now because we have some baby ducks in here. Um, which, oh, you can see them a bit. But, uh, they don't really like it, so maybe I show them some other time. We also have a few chickens right here, and I think we have 11 of them or 12. They just roam the area, so they go up in the pen here. And oh, there's the next cat, Gracie. She actually likes to play, but eh, not outside. Oh, she actually comes to me that's interesting oh hey Gracie and this cat really likes to cuddle but she can get really hyper too so right now I'm in front of our chili and tomato tunnel and I gotta admit they weren't looking too healthy at first but they started to actually pick it up really really well and we have just a small 
piece of wood here, a plank, so the chickens can't get in, but because they would love to. As you can see, we have a few paprikas on the slata, but some of them are starting to get eaten by slugs, so I really have to get in here and pick off some slugs. And some, like this one, started to topple over, and I haven't, yeah, come up with like a support structure in here, but I'll do that today or the next day just to fixate them. And this is super interesting because this is also a slata, like the other ones, but it has green paprikas and a lot of them, and they're getting quite big here. But it's interesting because all of them have this light green to yellow. The whole row here, you can actually see the colors. And this is the only one that has a different color. And here we still have some pumpkins and there's I think a cucumber or two in here and another melon that I haven't planted outside yet, which I'll do soon. And this should be the Thai Red Dragon. And it's starting to produce a lot of chilies, so I think this plant alone will be enough for us. And here we have the, um, I think it's tomato paprika. And this is the first real big one, and it actually does look like a tomato. Obviously a bit darker, but that's going to be interesting how this tastes. And I think it's not going to get too big. That's probably going to be the size that it'll, that'll stay. And the California Wonder tomatoes here haven't really started producing yet. I think they'll still take a while, but some of the flowers are out already. And I think, especially back here, yeah, you can see one pack of paprika already emerged. That's the ghost chili. The Indian and that's gonna be interesting how many fruit this is gonna produce right now it only has one on there same with the cherry chilies here that plant looks a bit rough and I think the other ones right here look a bit better so it's not too not super sad if one plant doesn't really produce a lot same with the paprikas here like the slata yeah but growing nicely here. We didn't really thin those plants out because um, yeah we didn't really care this year. We wanted to get some paprika, some chilies but um, we gotta yeah, see how that works right now without putting a lot of effort into it and see if it's worth it or not or if we actually have to put in more effort. Here we have Pimentos de Padron I think this plant already has a couple of them here. One, two, I think another third, third one, four. And they won't get that big, I think. They'll only get this big until we are able to harvest them. And right next to all of that, we have some of my exotic plants that I just like to put in here. So they're a bit secured from the direct sunlight. Ah, I even have a butterfly in here. Right here next to the horse, we actually put in a few tomatoes that were left over. Uh, we had some in here last year or out here. They don't really have a roofing either. So let's see how they're produced. They look pretty sh bad a week ago uh, since it rained a bit. But now since I pruned them a bit and let them grow up again here, they started to turn out to grow quite nicely. And some of them are even starting to flower, which is nice because even if they don't produce as much as the other ones, it's nice that we'll still get some extra. And right next to our front garden, we built like a trellis here for three of our grape vines, but they kind of stagnated in their growth. So they've been looking like this for, I think, at least a month or two now. This one looks quite good, quite nice, but still not really growing a lot. Maybe even just like one or two centimeters each week. And no grapes, unfortunately. This year we are a bit out of luck. We finally arrived at the main event, the front garden. 
and we have eight no dig beds in there and another bed down low that is just mulched um, with tree bark and we have some wood here some planks that we are going to use to um, frame the no dig beds but we're probably going to do that during fall so let's take a look we have a fence here around the beds um, because the chickens would love to get in there and eat everything first of all I show you the bed with the peas and the broad beans since I already showed a video about it I'm just gonna keep it short as you can see the peas are producing quite well still so I already harvested around two pounds and I'm probably gonna harvest around two to three or four pounds more and I actually have to start harvesting today. And those are the soybeans for edamame. They've been growing quite well now, but still not really any flowers on there. Hopefully that will change soon. And even the broad beans around here have started to produce some new flowers and are actually producing new beans around here although the aphids damaged them quite a bit but they started to yeah fight back basically and come back as you can see so uh, first of I thought I'm just gonna harvest some of the beans to uh, secure some seeds for next year but since we have quite a few of them again I'm actually thinking about just harvesting them regularly and keeping a few for next year or a few seeds for next year but the bed is in a rough shape right now uh, we have a sage here that has been blooming and the snack peas are looking quite awful and we have some camomilla in between here and uh, we haven't really tended the bed a lot so we have to get rid of all the weeds in here soon and here is one of the nice sunflowers that hopefully blooms soon. So next to the bed with the broad beans and the peas we have a bed with brassicas, uh, mainly brassicas. Some of them were planted early on during I think April outside and I actually grow, uh, grew them inside and some we just directly sowed in here but um, not all of them made it unfortunately and the spacing in between isn't that great it's hard to see because of the shadows it does so it doesn't really look structured right now plus in the horse manure that we used uh, we had some seeds from some cucumbers we dumped on there and some tomatoes should be like a wild variety that just grow now in here and we kept them in because they don't harm anything but also a lot of weeds are growing in here and I just didn't have the time yet to get rid of them if we continue here we have some flowers here that just grew from I think like a flower mix we had on there I think two or three years ago before we dug out those beds and they come every year and quite spread so they're really good for the pollinators, but still they get over that it's supposed to be like a walkway, which is quite annoying. And here we have the bed with the running beans, or runner beans. They started to really develop nicely, like they're growing quite fast now, as you can see, and they have a nice color. And even the paprikas, slatas that I have in there, three of them, even they started picking up finally rooted a bit deeper and start to flower now too which is nice and in between here we have the arugula and I think it's not gonna take too long until we can harvest the first beans as you can see we have a few in there here you can see one and it's starting to turn red it's the Brunhilde I think it's supposed to turn purple in the end we have quite a few in there actually 
here is a nice shot and they still have to grow a bit they're not quite there yet but I think the first harvest is around the corner and the same with here I think this is not a tomato that grew uh, by itself here my brother must have put this in because we had so many excess tomato plants that we just had to plant them somewhere and the same with this base in here we still have 40 plants, I might as well put some in there, even if they don't make it. The second brassica bed looks even worse than the first one. Well, the brassicas look fine, as you can see, they are, are huge. But since they all produce during fall and start of winter, still have a lot of time to grow. And here's also a pumpkin that just has sown itself and it actually starts to produce some fruit. It should be a Hokkaido, hopefully, because we haven't planted one this year by ourselves. And even in here, down there is another tomato, and I think down there too, and down there too. So they spread by itself too. And the stuff that's blooming here, or had bloomed here, are all Asia salads. Not this, that's just weeds. But right here, those are Asia salads. They look rough, we couldn't really harvest them, they started blooming right away. And, and I'm actually gonna pluck them out soon, I wanna weed out that bed. Since I weeded out this bed, as you can see, it basically looked the same. We have some beads in here that are finally able to grow. It's gonna be hard to see, but I'm actually quite happy and even some carrots in here, some that made it, most of them just didn't come out. And unfortunately not a lot is going on right here, I'm probably going to sow some new beets here soon. Goes all the way down here, and in this row here we have some onions. They are huge right now, like uh, if you can see, this type is the Stuttgarter Riesen. And some of them are just humongous and we plant them qu quite near next to each other so some of them are not getting as huge what we were doing is we were going to plug one out in between just to eat them already but the rest is just going to stay in there but some of them are basically as big as my hand right now which is going to be nice because it's going to be a huge harvest and we left i left some pollinators in here some camomilla back there. I'm not quite sure what this is. I don't think it's camomilla. It's something different. And I'll still weed out here since under the camomilla we still have some um, radishes. But I'll just let it grow. And this is actually a brassica from last year that just, yeah, survived the winter. And we cut it off. It was only the root in the um, in the soil, and it actually survived. And the problem with those beds here are that we have some holes, some mice holes here. A lot of them actually, but they, we throw the cats in here once in a while. I think one or two of them actually caught a mouse. In the row next to the onions we have some garlic and it's looking quite bad. Let's put it this way. They all toppled over, tossed over and are just laying there, look like dead. Some of them are still look nice, but I actually got one out yesterday just to see if they'll produce some, but as you can see, they actually have a bulb down here that is not too tiny uh, in comparison to the plant itself, but um, we just bought some cheap garlic from Spain in our supermarket and planted it in here during um, I think March or April, so it's even a wonder that they grew that big for being a non -real, or not really heat tolerant plant. So we were just happy that we can harvest some garlic, and we had some garlic in the other bed that we were able to harvest already that was there over winter, and we're probably going to use the garlic there just to yeah plant it in during fall again. So this bed is doing great right now. This is our sweet corn, it's all one variety. Last year we had 
I think 20 varieties all on one spot and not one single one turned out good so this time around we just kept it to one and uh, I think those are the male flower parts that are coming out already getting ready What's, which is funny with this type is that it produces quite a few offshoots down low and no or it's starting to get some female flowers as you can see here so I think they're about to get ready to being pollinated and hopefully we'll be able to harvest some corn soon we have I think 64 plants here and we wanted to get at least 100 cobs of corn uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if we can actually make it or not next to our corn bed we have our salad bed which is probably the worst looking bed that we have out here although it probably has the most biodiversity as you can see because ton of weeds are growing in here but the salads are planted really close next to each other so they started um, going into bloom now um, we got those plants as tiny tiny plants and like 50 of them in a bundle and we just planted them in here we didn't really think that they were gonna make it and they actually survived and we were able to harvest quite a few of them at least almost one a day but now it's they're gonna get bitter and we might just harvest the leaves and here is some of the lolorosos they're getting bigger now too and are probably gonna start blooming soon so we're just gonna normally it's a salad where we just pick off some leaves but we are probably just gonna cut it off since we don't want it to bloom right now and everything in here that looks like kind of a brassica type that's all Asia salad that went into bloom same as here we harvested some leaves but um, yeah we left left it there and probably are, I'm gonna just pick it off soon and here's our spinach that also started flowering and I'm just gonna keep it there let it flower I'm not gonna harvest the seeds because it's, I think this one is a hybrid but yeah we just forgot to <laughs> harvest it um, and just let let it grow like that unfortunately but that's just how it goes we have a few things in between I'm not sure about the English name in German it's mangold we have two or three of them and they're finally looking nice now they had a or they've been under attack from aphids too and look kind of sad but now we have one here that's a variety of bright lights and we have some oh I think chard yeah it's chard and we have some chard here and somewhere in, in there I think and I'm looking forward to it because I really enjoy chard it goes really well with most dishes so hopefully or I think we're able to start harvesting soon especially this one I still haven't planted the tomatoes here we still have 40 tomatoes in there and I'm just not getting to it unfortunately but hopefully I'll start soon and the rest of the tomatoes that we have in here started to grow really really well we have quite a few so this is the purple smarag and we have a lot of tomatoes hanging here and going on the other side there are a few back here and even on top here some new ones are appearing and we're really looking forward to those some of them just look super funny so you can see how they branch out we have a few here and that branches into the other side too quite a few hanging here too those are some of the pear shaped I'm not sure which pear it is right now since we have I think four or five pear types the San Mazzano that we have here starting to produce well big fruits but they don't really get any color yet I think the green zebra here this one is gonna be one of the first ones we can actually harvest it's starting to feel a bit softer since it's not gonna get any different color anymore so we always have to feel it and see 
if it's ready or not. And that's the beef steak. It is getting bigger. It's still not quite there yet. Still has to grow a bit more, but looks looking really nice and juicy. Some more pear-shaped tomatoes. That's the blue beauty, I think. As you can see, the color already started to change, but only on top, so that's still not ready yet. And this one is probably the biggest tomato we have right now, which is the chocolate stripes. So it's almost as big as my hand here. And it started to get a bit of coloration here. It's starting to turn a bit more orange or brown. And hopefully that will continue. And those ones look really good. Some of the pear-shaped ones too, they're quite dark already, but still not ripe. And they look almost ready, but on the other side, they're still a bit green. Same with those here. Looking good, but not quite there yet. The Reise Tomate here has the same problem as the one back there. It only has like a small stem that came out that continues to grow, but the leaves aren't looking too great. So let's see if they're actually going to produce some more fruit or not. But it's still going to be interesting to see how they taste and if they actually develop fully and if they're worth the hassle or not. And the Johannesbeer Tomate is growing really, really well. And as you can see, we actually have red ones popping up here too. And I think this plant alone has at least, yeah, probably around 400 flowers and tomatoes on it right now. And it's probably gonna produce even more and more. But the tomatoes are small. Here's another nice and chunky one. And those are the smaller ones. But even they have some really big tomatoes on here. At least some of them do. Same with this one. It has a really funny shape. I'm not sure what this is. And this one too, it has like really quite a lot of tomatoes on one stem here. Some of them want to create like offshoots here and I normally just rip them off or cut them off with a blade. But this tomato looks like it's gonna produce well. This is our last bed. We mulched everything here. You can see some corn growing and some sunflowers that seeded itself out like we didn't plant them there. And we mainly have pumpkins in here, here here and back there all those green spots there are pumpkins same with this big one this is a marina di Chogia, and it already has a big pumpkin on here right here and it's growing really really well it's quite big already like bigger than my hand and i think it's the only pumpkin that's on here right now but it's gonna continue to grow and as soon as it branches out more more pumpkins, pumpkins are gonna come. And we have this zucchini or summer squash here. The plants, I actually harvested some so we probably won't see any big zucchinis on there, but they're getting ready. Like this one here. And as soon as more of them are starting to actually flower and produce fruit, we will have so many zucchinis that we don't know what, what we're going to do with them. Here are two of the striped ones growing well. They're getting bigger each day, especially since it's super hot today. I'm actually sweating a lot right now since it has already 30 degrees Celsius and it's only like 11 o'clock here in the noon. And they will start growing really well now that it's so hot. We have another two plants out here. And they are doing great. I'm really looking forward to them. And here are the last few pumpkins and some zinnias that started to grow nicely now. I'm 
hoping that they're going to flower. They really enjoy them. I have some basil in here and some other herbs, but they didn't really pick it up yet. So this is going to be it for today. I didn't try to show every plant that we have, which is quite hard since we have so many and I don't want to make this a five hour long video, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be happy to give you an update soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and leave a like. See you next time.